the 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 weather starts to cool down Amen. leaves leaves start turning and falling off the trees and uh one of my favorite halloween activities is uh kind of a, a ding dong ditch sort of thing you run up to run up to the person's door ring the doorbell or, or bang on it if they don't have a doorbell run away and by the time they get to the door and they open it up they find a dead goat on their porch it's just, <laughs> that's just really it's really good it really gets them going man yeah, it really it's, gets it's, going. it's all innocent fun it's really there's nothing nothing wrong with the occasional dead goat on your porch and you watch they just roll themselves. their eyes and they're like oh not again it's that time of year isn't it yep. damn you neighbor kids dead goats and you watch from the shadows, like sweating profusely <laughs> from having dra- dragged that dead goat. See, uh, how many goats am I going to have to bury this year? <laughs> Goddamn backyard's full of them. That and horror films. Horror, I like uh, watching horror films around this time of year. It really brings it out, of course. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And, and Andrew, you're. Um, I, I would imagine you like watching horror films any any time of the year but this seems like probably especially your time yeah, uh, what, what are some of your favorites I definitely ramp it up uh, during the season um, I also start looking at like hor- horror Instagrams if, if you guys have been uh, if any of our listeners have been on our Instagram recently we've been doing uh, 31 days of Halloween uh, themed Instagram posts all through the month we started on the 5th. We were a little late, but <laughs> <laughs> every, yeah, every day we've done a different horror movie and kind of done like a little fun, either a quote or something kind of ironic or funny with it. Um, but yeah, I, I have the same sentiment that, that Jeremy has. Once you know it starts to cool down, the leaves start to turn, you get the wind going a little bit. And uh, you start seeing Oktoberfest beers on on the shelves and pumpkin flavored whatever, pumpkin spice everything. I'm all about it. You sort of you start to hear the Halloween theme song everywhere. You're like yeah. every, you're just walking down the street and yeah. you hear it. Yeah. Every every town in America becomes Haddonfield, Illinois. <laughs> it's, it's by awesome. by Halloween theme song, obviously you mean this is Halloween featured in the night before Christmas. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's all that's that comes to my to. head. That's it's thir- for me. It's thirty one solid days of that song. Guys, <laughs> oh. I wouldn't have it any other way. You know me. I'm I'm I, I like lists. I've got another list for you. <laughs> It's uh, the top ten Halloween songs as <laughs> as specified by Billboard. Uh, we have. Well, that was a. I added to that list. I didn't realize it was. I see what you added. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was pre-made. So we have. Uh, just, uh, Listeners at home, try and guess which one was Jeremy's <laughs> inclusion. <laughs> We have Halloween, the Halloween theme by John Carpenter, a classic. We, uh, Vicky and I saw him perform it live earlier in the year. Yeah, it was amazing. I was uh, so don't... pissed at myself for missing that. Oh, you should have come. Uh, actually, so. we didn't pay. We we got once again. Pat. Shout out to Pat. Pat is the man. <laughs> That's P Marie Forty One. <laughs> I'm probably. I didn't even check that. In. Oh, I, hope. Par- I don't. I don't think that's correct. Oh, oh, damn! You should probably check that. Check it right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> um, don't fear the Reaper by Blue o- Oyster Cult. Uh, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Anybody want to take this from me? Somebody's watching me by Rockwell. Uh, this is Halloween by Danny Elfman. Uh, the monster. The Monster by Eminem and Rihanna? <laughs> D- and it, what song is that? Is it, I could say that's not one I'm familiar with. Uh, I kept thinking that you were going to go on to say the Monster Mash, but you never do. You just keep saying the, the I wish, Monster Mash. I, I should have just gone past it. The Monster Mash by okay, Eminem. So it's P P M A R R E 41. That's uh, follow that. At Instagram. <laughs> That's Pat's Instagram. Uh, Ghostbusters by Ray Parker Jr. Marty. Uh, Mark, I'm, Mark, would you like to interject at this point? I believe the song you're thinking of is I Want a New Drug by Huey Lewis in the News. 
but uh, I'm, I'm less said about that, the better. Uh, uh, Ray Parker Jr. got his ass whipped in court over that. So, uh, you know what? I believe history will vindicate me in this matter. No, I, I agree with you. I think everybody agrees with you. But Ghostbusters is, is a good ripoff song. <laughs> I believe a judge agreed with me, so... Uh, Monster Mash by Bobby Doris Pickett and the Crypt Kickers. That was tough to get through. Um, <laughs> Demons by Imagine Dragons. Oof. I've said fuck Bieber before. Fuck Imagine Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thriller by Michael Jackson was number one on this list, and of course it was. Uh, Jeremy also <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> uh, Ghosts by Deftones is a good one. Bitches Brew by Crosses. Um, not familiar, but I bet it's awesome. I like Bitches Brew by Miles Davis, personally. <laughs> yeah, amen, bro. <laughs> Miles Davis did a Bitches Brew song? Hell yeah. He did oh, a whole, album, a whole album, album called yeah. Bitches Brew, yeah. Oh, man, I didn't know that. Philistine. Uh, what's Dead Man's Bones, Jeremy? It's a, it's a band. It's Ryan Gosling's band. Oh, really? Good? Yeah, it's good, dude. The whole album's good. It's all about monsters and and spooky Halloween stuff. It's really good. I uh, my favorite Halloween song is uh, what's featured on Thirty Rock. And it's Werewolf Bar Mitzvah. Yeah, it's a badass <laughs> song. Uh, for my spooky scary for my thirtieth birthday, Vicky threw me a surprise Halloween themed party. Uh, it was a costume party, and on my uh, birthday cake. What did it say? I said, uh, what did it say? Well, never mind. <laughs> Here, I got pictures. Was that when you were Hunter S. Thompson? Yeah. yeah. Guys, it yeah. is very hard to find Halloween themed things in December and November. Oh, I bet so, yeah. <laughs> While you're looking that up, here are uh, a few more of our favorites. Uh, a Nightmare on El- on My Street by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. You got anything to say about that, Marty? <laughs> Poser. <laughs> Hey, 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 sorry. hey! Let's calm sorry, down. Sorry. Which which one do you do you prefer? Uh, I, I believe the, the the proper entry there would be uh, "Are You Ready for Freddy?" by the Fat Boys, as featured in an actual Nightmare on Elm Street movie. <laughs> Just saying. What was the Dawkins song? Oh, uh, Dream Warriors from Nightmare on Elm Street Three. That's a badass. Song. Uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion from Nightmare on Elm Street 4, Love Kills. It was an excellent song, too. Uh, don't We can't forget about <laughs> Devil Went Down to Georgia by the Charlie Daniels Band. Uh, the time There War. again, I would have to interject that Devil Went Up to Michigan, much better song. <laughs> now I feel super dumb because Andrew's birthday cake said... Happy Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, spooky scary. <laughs> I had to tell the lady. <laughs> I had to tell the lady to put that on a cake. <laughs> at uh, it was like uh, after um, Thanksgiving, and I was like, "Can you uh, put Happy Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, spooky scary on a cake?" It's just like, can you write that down? <laughs> <laughs> my my personal favorite. Halloween song of all time is Red Right Hand by Nick Cave. I can put it on at any time. It transports me to October, mid-October. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I love that song. Uh, Dracula's Wedding by Outkast is great. The Boogie Monster oh, by Niles Barkley is great. Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo. Uh, I heard this on the radio the other day and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> Anybody have any any favorites? Uh, really, for Halloween songs, I'm, uh, you know, the hair metal in me says Dream Warriors, probably oh, just yeah. if for no other reason than than I, I every time I hear that song, I also see the video in my head, and and Nightmare on Elm Street three was probably my favorite in the series, yeah, so that that immediately transports me into that headspace. Jeremy, you got a favorite? I, I already listed mine. <laughs> no, that's very true. We all know Robbie. Robbie, favorite. how about you? Well, as far as the music, I already professed my love for the uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> this is Halloween song, just because it's 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 a it holds a special place in both myself and my my sister's hearts. And uh, you know, whenever we're we're hanging out, if if we're bored, you know, there's a there's a greater than zero chance that that we'll just look at each other and start singing it and smiling back and forth. And it's just, now, it's just it's very nostalgic for me. <laughs> is that you're? I'm assuming you're a purist. So I'm assuming the the Marilyn Manson remake of that probably 
didn't find oh, that can room go. in your heart. Yeah, that can that can fuck <laughs> off. I got I got no use for that. But that's, that's <laughs> I, I I really I really dislike the the pattern of taking. It happens a lot in uh, film scoring too. Taking like an otherwise a more, a more or less innocent song and making like the dark and creepy mm-hmm. version of it. You can keep it. I I really don't care for it. It's 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 hacky and it's lame and it's you know it's just cashing in on people's. You know, awareness work. of the yeah, but yeah, yeah. The, not only is it unoriginal, but you're just banking on people being like, "Oh wow, it's no, it's now it's all, all <laughs> creepy." Like I, I saw a film trailer the other day uh, for a some horror film about a guy in a in an insane asylum, and uh, oh hell, now I can't even think of what song it was that was being you know creeped up. But uh, was it like paint it was, black or something like that? Yeah, something like that. It was totally yeah. out of place and just. Yeah, it rubbed me the wrong way, and you know. Yeah. Now, you and I. One of the things that I was thinking of, you know, as um, and we were talking about it earlier. This time of year, you and I, especially Robbie, as kind of the the board gamers of the uh, of the group. This is the kind of time of year when I want to find like a really good scary board game, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of horror themed kind of board games, but. To actually play a board game that that more or less instills the emotion of fear is really hard to come by. Yeah, I mean, as far as uh, you know, commercially produced uh, board games, um, what what I would recommend to anybody uh, listening who wants a uh, fun game that requires literally no investment, though, um, is uh, more, a lot of you, you know, are probably going to wind up at at parties this season you know a halloween party and uh, i would encourage um anybody who's doing so if they think that the the audience of people that they'll you know be with is is up for it to uh uh, give a shot at a game a party game called werewolf um it was uh it's also sometimes known as mafia it was uh developed by a uh, a russian guy named uh, dmitry davidoff kind of as a, a social experiment in the 80s and uh and then it was uh, when it became popular in America. It was popularized by a guy named uh, Andrew Plotkin, and he gave it the uh, the werewolf theme. Um, but the basic idea is that it's a it's a team game uh, of secret identities, and uh, a small portion of the players are secretly werewolves preying on the other team, which are just innocent villagers. And um, the entire game is about lying and. Uh, you know, basically acting as a lynch mob, trying to figure out which players in the group are werewolves, and um, the werewolves are acting to to you know preserve their secret identities, and the uh, you know human players are uh, it, the onus is on them to try to read the room and understand which character or, you know which people are acting fishy, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's. A lot of fun. Um, you you can find the uh, the rules for it online. I'll try to uh, get us a link for the show notes. Mm-hmm. For and there's, a, there's a basic several. Just... I'm sorry. There's there's like several, um, like depending on your taste. There's several variations of that. Uh, there's the one night version. There's there's the more recent ultimate uh, vampire. That's, that's yeah, you know, if if you if you care to go, you know, you know, purchase a retail product, you know, you, like Marty said, there's. There's lots of different flavors of it and lots of different games that have taken that same idea and tweaked it a little bit. But really, to play to play the play it at its most basic form, all you need are some scraps of paper, and uh, you know you you need one player who's who's kind of outside of the game and moderating it, um, which is what I usually find myself doing uh, whenever I'm I'm showing it to people, and I'm happy to do it because I'm a terrible liar. I get found out immediately, you know, if I'm if I'm the werewolf. Uh, when I'm mm-hmm. actually playing the game, but um, it's it's really simple and it's it's really a lot of fun and it's a and it's a really cool spectacle to to see whether you're in the game or outside of it. Just watching how the, uh, the, the you know if you're sitting outside of the game and you you understand who is who, it's really funny and and mm-hmm. and really you know interesting to to watch how people are you know lying and and trying to to cover each other and it's never not been fun in my experience and and i mean it's just outside of board games too there's there's been a plethora or a rise maybe in 
video games that that are, are that are sort of more Halloween appropriate. Andrew, you've you've always been kind. Of-